we will go to discuss the glossopharyngeal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve it is a ninth cranial nerve it has two terms glosso and pharyngeal that means this nerve is much more related with the supply to the tongue as well as to the pharynx this nerve also starts from the medulla so we must draw the picture of the medulla pyramid olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle pyramid olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle this is a pyramid olive and this is inferior cerebellar peduncle foramen magnum glossopharyngeal nerve it comes out from the space or from the fissure in between the olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle and after that it passes through the jugular foramen so let us draw the jugular foramen jugular foramen has anterior compartment posterior compartment and the middle compartment the middle compartment of jugular foramen is related or concerned with the passage of the nerves here i like to draw the heart palate it is the soft palate mandible tongue this is the dorsum of the tongue which is divided in a v shaped fissure in anterior 2/3 and posterior 1/3 part posterior 1/3 it has the papilla these are the circumvallate papilla so this region it is the posterior one third of the tongue hyoid bone thyroid cartilage and here we expect the pharynx this one is our pharynx from the styloid process to the pharynx there is a muscle so if this one is a styloid process of the temporal bone this muscle is known as stylopharyngeus it is one of the longitudinal muscle of pharynx so this is the stylopharyngeus it is one of the longitudinal muscle of pharynx stylopharyngeus muscle so this muscle this one is the stylopharyngeus muscle from styloid process to pharynx so the name is stylopharyngeus muscle this is our pharynx so obviously from the upper border of thyroid cartilage here we expect the external carotid artery internal carotid artery common carotid artery at this region we are having the carotid sinus or carotid body so this is a region of carotid sinus or carotid body this region now here i like to draw the tympanic cavity 
which having the floor of the tympanic cavity they say this is the floor of the tympanic cavity and this is the posterior wall of the tympanic cavity on the posterior wall there is a plexus sorry on the medial one on the medial wall there is a plexus nerve plexus over the promontory and here we having the parotid gland okay so this one is our tympanic cavity this is tympanic cavity this is a parotid gland tympanic cavity this one is a floor of the tympanic cavity this is the medial wall of tympanic cavity where we are having the promontory on promontory there will be formation of some nerve plexus now the first fiber of glossopharyngeal nerve we'll start from nucleus ambiguus this one is the motor fiber it starts from nucleus ambiguus nucleus ambiguus this is the motor nucleus nucleus ambiguus present in the medulla the fiber comes out passes through the jugular foramen and it supplies the stylopharyngeus muscle so this is this fiber is totally a motor fiber or this fiber it is totally a motor fiber who supplies a stylopharyngeus muscle stylopharyngeus muscle is developed from the third branchial arch so this is the nerve who supplies the muscle developed from branchial arch so this fiber also called as branchiomotor fiber so the first component of glossopharyngeal is motor component this motor component is branchiomotor component branchiomotor component to supply the stylopharyngeus muscle for the muscle of third arch now there is another nucleus called inferior salivatory nucleus inferior salivatory nucleus this nucleus is also a motor nucleus but it is a parasympathetic secretomotor nucleus so the parasympathetic secretomotor fiber it also comes out outside the jugular foramen it leaves the main trunk of glossopharyngeal nerve makes the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal which enters in the tympanic cavity passes over the promontory get unrelated reaches near the parotid gland and here it relays for the secretomotor fiber to the parotid gland so here it makes the otic ganglia otic ganglia so this one is also a motor fiber but this motor fiber is the parasympathetic secretomotor fiber so the second component is again motor camon motor parasympathetic secretomotor who is the nucleus here inferior salivatory nucleus who is a branch here tympanic branch so here we got the muscular branch of glossopharyngeal nerve this one is muscular branch and here we got the tympanic branch so number 1 muscular branch number 2 tympanic branch now third category of fiber who carries the sensation who carries the sensation from 
this one is our soft palate and here we expect our tonsillar fossa and the palatine tonsil so this one branch from the soft palate this one branch from the tonsil this one branch from the tongue posterior one third of the tongue and branch from the pharynx so four branches one palatine branch one tonsillar branch one lingual branch another one pharyngeal branch so there are four branches that carries the general sense general sense and the fiber passes upward this is a sensory fiber so direction is towards the central nervous system cell body it lies outside the jugular foramen the fiber passes up as the fiber passes up this fiber hand over this general sensation to spinal nucleus of trigeminal there is one nucleus that belongs to trigeminal so it hands over the sensation to spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve this is a nerve responsible for, to accept the sensation general sensation from the structures related to the head neck so definitely the branch from the palate the branch from the tongue uh, tonsillar fossa branch from the tongue and branch from the pharynx they carries the general sensation it passes along the trunk of glossopharyngeal nerve but ultimately this sensation is related to the spinal nucleus of trigeminal so the third component of glossopharyngeal is sensory general sensory so as it is general sensory here we get four branches this is tons palatine branch this one tonsillar branch this is lingual branch and this one is pharyngeal branch where is the nucleus spinal nucleus of trigeminal it relates to the spinal nucleus of trigeminal fourth here is the carotid body from the carotid body straight sensation it is relayed along with the pharyngeal branch from carotid body the straight sensation is relayed along with the pharyngeal branch the straight sensory fiber here the cell body lies this is sensory fiber going towards the central nervous system and the sensation is related to nucleus tractus solitarius the sensation is related to the nucleus tractus solitarius so it is the another nucleus nucleus tractus solitarius so the second sensation is the straight sensation straight sensation comes from kotha theke elo from carotid body straight sensation from carotid body and it is related to nucleus tractus solitarius this is a nucleus for the straight sensation fifth an important sensation is taste sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue as well as from the papilla taste sensation this fiber passes along with the lingual branch and the taste sensory fibers 
approaches along the fibers of glossopharyngeal nerve cell body lies here and ultimately this fiber gets related to the nucleus tractus solitarius so this fiber also gets related to nucleus tractus solitarius so the fifth sense component is sensory what sense taste sense kotha theke taste sense ane taste sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue posterior one third of the tongue and the fiber is related ultimately to nucleus tractus solitarius so if we analyze the trunk of the glossopharyngeal nerve if this is a trunk of the glossopharyngeal nerve here we get one swelling and here we get another swelling these two swellings after jugular foramen this is the first swelling so it is called the superior ganglia and this is the second swelling or it is called the inferior ganglia so there are two ganglia superior ganglia of glossopharyngeal inferior ganglia of glossopharyngeal why the ganglia are there they are nothing but they housing the cell bodies of the sensory neuron superior ganglia it houses the cell bodies of the sensory neuron who relates to spinal nucleus of trigeminal inferior ganglia lodges the cell bodies of those neurons sensory neurons who relates to nucleus tractus solitarius see the tympanic branch goes out at the place of the inferior ganglia of glossopharyngeal so the glossopharyngeal nerve ultimately we can see it is composed of five different components the first one is a branchiomotor component the nucleus is nucleus ambiguous the second one is a parasympathetic secretomotor component new from the nucleus ambiguous the fibers comes out and it supplies to the stylopharyngeus muscle that is muscular branch parasympathetic secretomotor fiber comes from inferior salivatory ganglia leaves the trunk of glossopharyngeal as tympanic branch goes to the tympanic uh, plexus gets unrelated in the tympanic plexus and finally goes to supply the otic ganglia relays in the otic ganglia from there the postganglionic neuron comes out and supplies the parotid gland so this is the secretomotor supply to the parotid gland third component is general sensory component so this one is our palatal branch this is tonsillar branch this branch is the lingual branch and this branch is the pharyngeal branch so earlier we got the muscular branch and tympanic branch now we have the palatal branch number 3 we have the tonsillar branch number 4 we have the lingual branch number 5 and we are having the pharyngeal branch that is number 6 from palate tonsil tongue and the pharynx it receives the general sensation and hands over this general sensory fiber to the spinal nucleus of trigeminal as it is the moral duty of trigeminal to accept the general sense of the organs allied in the head neck region so it also receives the general sensation from the soft palate tonsil posterior one third tongue pharynx now come to the stretch sensation stretch sensation from the carotid body the stretch sensory fiber the fourth component the stretch sensation stretch sensory fibers passes along the pharyngeal branch and it ultimately relays to the nucleus tractus solitarius 
fifth fiber is a again sensory fiber taste sensation special sense from the posterior one third of the tongue and the papilla this fiber passes along the lingual nerve Ling sorry lingual branch it is not the lingual nerve lingual branch and it is carried by the trunk of glossopharyngeal and finally relay to nucleus tractus solitarius so what we get in summary what we get glossopharyngeal nerve it comes out from the medulla comes out in between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle it has five components four nuclei among them three nuclei is of own another nuclei is borrowed from trigeminal nucleus ambiguus is a motor nucleus who gives the muscular branch branchomotor fiber inferior salivatory nucleus is a parasympathetic secretomotor nucleus that supplies the parotid gland nucleus tractus solitarius it re receives two types of sensation one is a taste sensation from the tongue another one is a stretch sensation from the carotid body and the borrowed nucleus that is spinal nucleus of trigeminal it receives sensation from palate tonsil posterior one third tongue and pharynx now how many branches it has it has muscular branch it has tympanic branch palatal branch tonsillar branch lingual branch and pharyngeal branch so ultimately what we can see this nerve is concerned with the posterior one third of the tongue and the allied structures with the pharynx so the name is glosso and pharynx so the name come glosso pharyngeal nerve So that is all about the glossopharyngeal nerve. Thank you.